Hey there, I'm Brad. I'm the Harley Davidson Wizard. Today we were just going to do a quick follow up on the oil change motorcycle that I made a video on yesterday. Just to test out a new wind microphone that I got for, or a new wind setup that I have for the GoPro. Let's see if it makes it easier on test rides as far as the audio coming through. And we were hoping to be done with this vehicle, but once we started touching the rear brake lever, we knew that there was a problem. So we're going to check into that. But thanks for watching. Like and subscribe. Thanks. All right. We are testing out the new wind microphone setup for the GoPro today. Hopefully we have better results. I figure this is probably the best setup with this big boy windshield. And this vehicle we did the oil change o-ring video on yesterday. The customer approved front wheel bearings and a front tire and a rear tire so we already did that. They're just current style thumb mops. I already have my helmet on so I'm going to click in and we'll go for a test ride and see how this goes. Well, as far as the oil change went, that went great. And the oil level is perfect. But the first time I touched the rear brake lever, I, uh, it was clear that there was a problem with the rear end. So I don't know if you could tell, hopefully the video came through as, as far as the road test. But the bike was shaking like crazy when you'd use the rear, rear brake pedal. So there's obviously something wrong with the rear brake rotor. And like, I haven't ever felt a rear brake rotor that warped before. So I'm guessing that it's probably like 25 thousands warped. But let's pop the saddlebag off and get the indicator set up on it and take a look and see what the deal is. This is the little indicator setup that I have. It isn't very expensive, it's super cheap. I probably just bought this thing off Amazon. And then I wanted to use it on a vice grip setup, so I just welded a nut onto the end of my vice grips, or the top of it, so that you can just vice grip it to something. I'll put a link down in the description uh, if I can find one on Amazon, but check it out if you need one. So I already have the wheel off the ground using a flat jack and then I like to put the vice grips on something where it's not like a visual it's not a visual finish so it's on the back of a nut for this out bag support bracket we've got everything kind of just zeroed out here to zero let's see what type of run out we have and we're just at the very tip of the rotor because you don't want to be getting stuck in the holes, but let's see if we can't. Because I probably touched it. All right. Oh man, I was seriously just guessing. So there's a little over 25, and then another five. So it's about 30 thousandths warped. So the spec on. Harley-Davidson brake rotors is typically 
I want to say it's less than 10 without looking in the service manual. But seriously, if you're at 10 thousandths, you can feel it. You can definitely feel it in the brake lever. But we're at 30 thousandths, so I can't believe it didn't come in with a customer complaint like that. That's wild. But the rear brake pedal is basically unusable because the rear rotor is warped so much. Well, before I go ahead and make that quote and just assume that it's the brake disc, because it could potentially be the wheel bearings and the way that they're installed in the wheel, like they could be installed slightly crooked. So being that we're already involved in this project with the tire, it seems like a smart idea to pull the rear wheel back off and then I will set it up on an axle and measure out the brake disc and the surface of the brake disc and in situations like this where I'm thinking it could be a potential problem with the wheel bearing I have a a test brake disc it's for front wheels I don't know if I have a rear one but either way we're gonna pull the rear wheel off set it up in a test fixture and see if it's the wheel bearings or the brake disc because we don't want to assume and just throw a brake disc at it and still have problems so that's the deal that's what we're gonna do we're gonna pull this wheel back off and see what the problem is all right so here's my text test fixture we already removed the wheel from the motorcycle what I do this is pretty ghetto but this is just an extra front axle that I have laying around and I put it in the vise so that the tire can spin and then same thing we still have all of the run out and it's easy to just fit it up like this put preload on the bearings and then now what I'm going to do I'm going to remove the brake rotor and measure the run out at the face of the wheel because if the wheel bearings are incorrectly there should be essentially zero run out at the face of the wheel and if there is run out then we probably have we most likely have a problem with the way that the wheel bearings are installed so that's what we're going to do next I'm just going to pop these five screws off and then move this indicator down to the face of the wheel but let's get going on that Now that we have the brake rotor removed and we're measuring directly off this, the face of the hub, if we have any type of run out here, it's gonna be that the wheel bearings are installed slightly crooked. That is a possibility. It's pretty rare, but if you don't install the wheel bearings right, it happens. So that's the one thing that we wanna rule out. The wheel bearings feel right, they look right. Everything is normal as far as the way that you typically test wheel bearings. That's why we're going this extra step and we're measuring the run out on the face of the hub of the rear wheel to verify that it's definitely the rear brake rotor because it's super unusual for this rear brake rotor to have that much run out unless like somebody has pounded the side of it with a hammer or something but now that we're spinning the wheel we can see that we have z essentially a zero run out on the face of the hub so now we can make a accurate quote for just a brake disc and it would make sense to put new pads along with that new brake disc and see if the customer wants to do it. So that's where we're at. That's what I'm going to get doing. So I'm going to go do that. Well, the customer called back and he approved the brake pad, the brake pads, the rotor and the hardware for it. The rotor that we're using is a 418 10-08B. The brake pads are 41852-08B. And then the brake pad bolts that we have is a 43567-92. They have a little lock patch on it and just for security reasons we don't reuse them. You know the, the service manual recommends not to reuse them so that's an easy way to get sued you know is have something happen and 
you reuse some stupid bolts. So we're gonna go and get those on the hub. I'm gonna clean out the threads with a thread chaser and then use our alcohol based cleaner to blow the threads dry. And then I'm gonna install the brake rotor and torque it down and we're gonna recheck it while we already have it fixtured up like this. All right, so we have our new brake disc on. Uh, the rear rotor bolts, like I was saying, everything's cleaned and torqued down. 45 foot-pounds, that's a factory spec on there. We have our dial indicator set back up. I don't expect this thing to be perfectly true. Like, I don't expect it to stay dead zero. I would like to see two to three thousandths. So, cross your fingers. See if I can get you a better view. All right, so right there, we're dead on zero. Got about one. About one thousandths. You know what? That is spectacular. So. I'm really glad that I did that extra little work here to double check that it wasn't a wheel bearing ins installation issue because 30 thousandths is crazy. 30 thousandths of run out on a rear rotor is really just pretty unusual. So let me show you put the wheel back in. I'll just do that real quick and then maybe I'll slow down around the brake pads and we'll continue on and try to get this thing buttoned up today. I'd like to see this thing gone. So. Let's keep on going. So we have the new brake disc in there, the axles tightened down, the belts tensioned, everything is ready to go. Now before we just like pad slap it and toss new pads in the caliper, it's a good idea to clean your brake disc because it's going to have a bunch of crap on it. It's going to have a bunch of oil on it, anti-corrosion kind of things. All right, so all of that's off. What I'm gonna do next is, before I push the pistons back in the caliper, I just use a nice little pry bar like this on old pads. I'm gonna blow, I'm gonna use the same type of, type of brake cleaner, but I'm gonna try to blow any type of loose debris and dirt out from the back. Rinse, rinse that out and then use the press the air to blow it out. That way I'm not trying to jam a whole bunch of dirt and debris in behind the piston seals as I'm pushing the pistons back in. So I'm going to do that and let's continue on.
Alright, so now that the brake caliper is all cleaned out, if you saw, I like to go in and like agitate any type of dirt that's on the pistons in the brake caliper because our new rear brake pads are going to come with some anti-squeal paste and that paste needs to be able to like correctly kind of like tack on the back of the pistons and the, on the back of the brake pads or else it won't do its anti-squealing type of job but here you go we're going to apply the paste to the brake pads and get them stuck in there and let's continue on All right, so that's pretty good. And then you peel your little templates off. I'm gonna use my actual hand so it just makes it easier. And then if you got crazy, just go around the sides, clean off any residual so that it doesn't actually accidentally make it onto the actual brake caliper or you know onto the actual pad face put that somewhere clean same with its friend all right that's looking pretty good we're gonna find a clean spot for him like that all right now that our brake pads are ready to go our caliper is ready to go. Let's get our brake pads inserted into the caliper. So there's one for one side and then one for the other side. I like to kind of like put it in the center and then push the whole thing up towards the pistons just so that this type of uh, anti-squeal stuff doesn't get kind of like squeegeed off but it gets applied like up on the actual piston I don't know if you can tell but it's not right up on the edge and then once it's in all the way then I push it up against the piston It probably doesn't matter it probably doesn't matter <laughs> matter at all but now that we have it like that we're gonna get our caliper brake pad pin started 
thread it in. And then put the caliper on, bingo, bingo. And get our bolts in it. At this point, I like to put the little clip in it, a little safety clip, the anti backer out clip deal. And then I'm going to come back and torque these bolts and torque that bolt. Well, that's it for today you know that checking that oil turned into a lot more than I was expecting but I don't know I, I figure if you're sitting at home doing nothing then watching me fart around at work probably isn't that terrible but if you like it let me know if you don't let me know too I guess it really doesn't matter but I'm glad that we got that rear brake rotor all all figured out it's a really weird situation where when something is that warped and the customer doesn't uh, ask you specifically to take a look at it like usually when the rear brakes are like not usable because the rear rotor is so warped uh, the bike comes in for that reason so who knows whether that's information that got dropped off the work order or whatever the deal is with it but I try not to look too far into things and like nitpick everything when I'm doing a service like you know I'm trying not to sell everybody a brand new motorcycle and parts you know there's obvious safety related things you do the service you go through you do all the stuff but that was a weird tricky situation obviously it's a very unusual situation but that guy, he's going to be happy getting that bike back using those rear brakes. I know it for sure because they were terrible, but they're great now. Everything's good with it. The bike's all fixed up. New tires. thing rides great. So glad we got that all buttoned up. Thanks for watching. Like and subscribe. Bye.